guys, this is Simsfell and welcome to episode 2 of The Sims Medieval Season 2. We are back in the Kingdom of Sandusk, picking us a little bit after where we left off, which was speaking to Scout Rocky over here to hear what he had to say about Arbyville. Now, he had a little bit of a... Um, was it snapshot little speech bubble of what he said to the queen and in Sims Medieval that kind of goes away after a very short time. So unfortunately, I don't have it with me in this episode, but I had it at the end of the last episode. I just didn't read it out and I wrote it down. So let me go ahead and let you guys know what... Scout Rocky over here actually said to the Queen. So he said, Your Majesty, there's been a sudden increase in our pavilion pirate activity. There are rumors that dread Captain Clarissa Darktide has called a meeting of the Tribunal and that the Red and Black fleets have been doing heavy recruiting. We should proceed with caution. And now we OGs. Oh Excuse me, I was talking, Innkeeper and Baxter Dante. Yeah, I was going to say Dante. But no. Uh, this means that we actually, I don't know, might have some trouble brewing. It could very well be the pirates who caused all that wreckage and attacks. Or maybe it's the result of the war between the Trudonians and the pirates. I don't know that. Or the sailor that was shipwrecked was keeping the identity of his ship hidden. We'll have to find out and hopefully we do pretty soon. But the queen wishes to eat and while we send the queen eating, possibly sleeping, probably eating, <laughs> I am going to show you guys some of the updates we did to the castle at the end of the previous episode. So please call for food. Thank you very much. We're going to get um, Adora to make some food for us, which is an awesome thing about being the monarch. We actually have someone to cook. Anyways, going back down... You guys will notice that the throne room is looking a little bit different. So amid all of this frantic franticness of the shipwreck and a war overhead, the queen decided it was the perfect time to go ahead and update the castle. So she's gone ahead and replaced the stones, or pretty much covered up the stones with these wooden planks, dark wooden planks which fit the pirate aesthetic that she very much adores. And she's changed the floors as well from stone to wood, dark wood, from who knows a foreign forest, maybe from Arbyville, because I don't think we have wood this color over here. I feel like our wood is a tad bit lighter. Hmm, not too sure. Regardless, she went ahead and changed that and replaced some of these spots on the floors with an arrangement of tiles that have a really cool pink, pink color and a black. And I think that looks pretty awesome. You guys can let me know what you think as well. And I think she very much likes this aesthetic. I don't know what she's thinking. Maybe she thinks that if the pirates are indeed involved, perhaps if she makes her throne and her throne room a little bit more suitable to them when they come over, maybe there's more of a chance for discussion, for treaty, for some sort of alliance to show that, hey, I actually do love piratey stuff a lot. I am not one of those stuck-up nobility Tridonians that you guys are dealing with over on the other side of the world. I don't know. Maybe that's what she has been thinking. Regardless, she's going to finish eating, and as soon as she is done, she needs to hear the report from Scout Mary. The guild politics in Tridney are a complex web. Hostile business takeovers are common, but they rarely lead to violence. So let's hear the report and treat any and see what else we can gather. Oh, the queen is needing a drink. Hmm. So maybe once we finish speaking to Scott Mary before she heads off to bed, the queen can actually, oh, get a drink. I think we'll do that. We'll, uh, the queen will get a drink after she's done speaking with Mary. So let's see what oh, Scott Mary so has much. to say, shall we? No, oh. Okay. Here we go. My lady, the Tridonian Guild Consortium had an emergency meeting with Admiral Horace Mandrake of the Tridonian Navy to discuss the countermeasures against increased pirate attacks. I haven't seen things this heated in Tridney before. The Admiral is recommending a full-out assault on the pirates. This is troubling news. Return to your scouting assignments in Arbyville and Tridney. Continue to gather information and send word back to Sandusk. I'll have a word with Lieutenant Killian about our kingdom security. If war is coming, we need to be prepared. Also, excuse me, I didn't finish reading the other two. This is a little bit frustrating. Things <laughs> In Sims Medieval, I can't read as quick as the notifications come and go. There's not enough time. I don't know how to get them back. Huh. Okay, seems like even after she has a bit of a drink, what is she drinking? She's drinking some ale. She might have time to continue with some of this. And you guys have said that perhaps I should get the queen pregnant. She needs an heir. Um, in case she dies. 
Huh, which sounds like a great idea and all, but I do know that we have a quest where you um, get the queen married and get an heir, and I don't know if that quest is going to be compromised if I go ahead and get the queen pregnant, so I really don't want to. I mean, I want to get her pregnant, but at the same time, like, I want an heir, but I don't want to compromise the quest because I th feel like it's going to be a pretty fun quest. So let's see what we have going on. Make security arrangements with Lieutenant Killian. I don't know if I've ever spoken with Lieutenant Killian before, I don't remember. Sandusk will need to be prepared if things get ugly. Indeed. So we're gonna go discuss security arrangements. Oh my goodness, that ungodly loot. Please stop. Who is- Oh my goodness! Trickster Elvis, stop it. Jeez Louise. Oh, that is so loud. That is so loud! See that our forces are prepared, Lieutenant Killian. We may have avoided battle for now, but there is a war brewing, and I have a bad feeling we haven't seen the last of it. That was so flippin' that. Oh my goodness, what? The quest completed? Already? You completed the quest at gold level. Excellent work. Ominous tides. Lady Emissary the Great discovered the fate of shipwrecked sailor Juno's ship and crew, but the reason behind the attack remained a mystery. Sandusk's ship was attacked at sea by an unknown enemy. Meanwhile, scouts reported that Trini and Arbyville are on the brink of war. A storm looms on the horizon for Sandusk. Okay, so it looks like we wrapped that up pretty quick. I don't know why I thought it would be a bit of a longer quest, but it wasn't. Which, hey, is great because it means we can move on to something new. We have 90 resource points, um, but I don't want to go ahead and have a new um, hero yet because I like to um, keep that off until I've played with the most recent hero, which I haven't yet, so I'm not inclined to do that. But... Oh. Do you guys see this? We don't have the quest for the air anymore. Hmm. I don't know how that changes, but bef like when we came in episode one, one of the quests was the quest for the air, which we don't have right now. Isn't a big deal, but hey, it's interesting. Okay, we have this. A missing child. Sandusk was abuzz with news of a child gone missing. Recovering the child safely would be an incredible boon to kingdom morale. We haven't done this, have we? Now, I don't think they repeat quests. Let me know if that's a thing that happens, but I don't think they repeat quests. Now, this is gonna give us one well-being, which let's quickly have a look. We actually have space to have one well-being, guys. So I'm actually thinking we might do that quest and we'll do it from Uprooter's um, perspective. So play with the hero, the Apruda, so our bard. I think it's Apruda Goldry, not entirely sure, but we'll play with the bard because we haven't yet played with her and I want to explore her character and see what she's all about. So I think we're gonna go for the missing child. Now I don't know... Wait, hold on a second. So what... Do you guys know what um, the exclamation marks are? I don't actually know what they are. Let me know what the exclamation marks mean. Because with these ones, I, it doesn't have the same thing, but this one it says, a poultry aspect can cause unforeseen strife in Sandusk. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. But we want to find the missing child, and I'm going to do this with... Yeah, I'll find him through song. I'll do it um, with Trabada Aparuda. I really want to explore her. So we could do it with her. I will find him through the Watcher with the Shepherd Praxian. I'll find him through my post with Sir Epi. I'll find him through Diplomacy, Lady Emissary of the Great. And I'll find him through the Watcher with Sister Floessa. I think I want to go with Trabada Fruta though. So okay, here we go guys. I'm quite excited to see what we get into. <gasps> Trabada Apruda. She looks really badass. I love her. Something's amiss among the townspeople. They barely stir at the sound of my music. I should ask around and discover the source of the distress. Of course. Okay. And she is excitable, vain, and cursed. Now, I don't remember exactly, guys, what her story was. So if you guys do, then please let me know. But I'll probably be revisiting season one to go see what Apruda story is. I think her name is Apruda Goldrain. Not entirely sure, but I think that is her whole name. Although, it's not going to be recorded here. Okay. So, okay, I'm quite excited to go ahead and actually see what we can get up to with her. Huh, she doesn't have any duties for the day. She is quite hungry though, so maybe we'll just jump down for a second. 
And I don't think I've given her her makeover yet, have I? Normally what I like doing with my different heroes is going yes. through and customizing the colors on their outfits to make them look more mm -hmm. unique than they do with the color schemes that come with Sims Medieval. So I'll probably be doing that at some point, probably between this episode and the next, if we don't finish this quest up super quick, which we might not. But, oh, she's off to go make food, which I was going to get her to do anyways. And then she's going to start investigating because her energy is way up, even though it is 10 p.m. on Sunday night. She does have 1,000 simoleons, which is awesome to start off with. And she's agnostic. Hmm. So that's quite interesting. And uh, it'll be cool to see if she gets influenced by any of her other heroes because we do have both the Peteran Priest and the Jacobin Priest. And... Oh, oh, let's play as an interesting dynamic in terms of those two because our Jacobin priest mm. is completely opposite of the Jacobin faith. He actually embodies everything that the Peter and faith is about. And then our Peter and priest pretends like she embodies everything the Peter and priest is about, but she actually acts very much so like what the, Jac uh, the Jacobin faith preaches, which is quite interesting. <laughs> ah, okay, so this is the Peter and priest we have, Sister Floessa. But okay. Uh, Trabada Akruda, let's go ahead, eat some gruel. Unfortunately, over here, we don't dine like the queen does. But I guess that is fine, that is fine. Okay, so we have Bam and Daniel, Sister Floessa, Guildsman Nuala, Carrie the Peasant. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Okay, and she's just about done. So what does this say? Investigate disturbance with townspeople. What's causing this disturbance? And I think talking to the barman would be the wisest thing to do because it just... Oh, jeez, that's disgusting. <laughs> Carrie just threw up. Um, yeah, I feel like the barman would probably know the most about what's going on. And I feel as though at some stage I'm going to have to go through and probably lower the volume on some of these things because I've noticed the birds are very loud and then when the like a guards fight and stuff, the clangs of steel are crazy loud. Okay, alas, a child has gone missing. A few of the villagers claim to have seen a small boy hiding around the town. Perhaps there is some way for me to help find him. Perhaps there is. Let's see the options. How should the quest party proceed? How should the quest party proceed? Write a poem to spread the news. Play a song to rally the people. I think she would play a song to rally the people. Yeah, I think that's what she's going to do. Because she was saying that her music. Not necessarily performances, but her music wasn't getting through to people. So I think play a song to rally the people. I should play a few songs to inspire the people to find the child. Of course. Okay, perform three songs on the lute. I'll inspire the people to find the child through a song. And we're at the bard. What better place to perform a song than right here? So let's see. The Jig of Gentleman Jim. <laughs> Why not? Why not? I like the woohoo one though. I do like the woohoo one. <laughs> we'll do that next. We'll go through all the songs, so that's fine. Oh look, she's drinking some wine. Maybe when she's wrapped up that, she can play the lute. Also, the lutes are crazy loud. So I'll have to... Can I jump into settings? Let's see. Okay, here. Here we go, guys. Audio. Holy cow! Why are these so loud? Audio quality. Of course I want it to be high. As for these... No, thank you. You don't need to be that loud. Everything I'm going to put... That is way too loud. No wonder things have been a little bit crazy. Oh, no. Audio quality is high. There we go. I'll leave everything in the middle. And hopefully... There we go. I can zoom in on my characters without having everything, like, exploding in my ear. Much better. Much better. Okay. She's talking to Sister Floessa. She doesn't have any relationships with anyone apart from the barman and trickster Alvis, who spends a lot of his time in court, actually. It makes sense that she's friends with the trickster because, in a sense, he's a performer as well. Okay. Sister Floessa is off. I don't know if a Peter and Priest would spend time at a place like a tavern, but Sister Floessa doesn't care. Hmm. And I am very... Um, has turned to say anything about what Apruda does or any of the actions she takes because I have completely forgotten her history, although I do think she has an interesting one. And once I find out what her history is by revisiting one of the older episodes, then I'll be a lot more comfortable. Look at that! The music isn't piercing my flippin' eardrums now. 
But um, I'll be able to perhaps comment on her character a lot more because I'll know what drives her, what her history is, what she's gone through, and why she's actually here. Oh, look at her. That's so nice. Providing entertainment for everyone in the tavern. I love this. Ah, okay. Well, that's pretty cool. She has no family, obviously, and no friends. As for the other characters, I don't mind the other characters actually falling in love and actually uh, starting a family or anything. It's just, I don't actually think anyone has a family. None of our heroes are married, I'm pretty sure. But I wouldn't be against them starting a family, except for the queen, because there is a quest for the queen to do that. And I don't want to go ahead and do that, like uh, get her expectant and get her married, because that might make the quest void. Okay, let's see. She's gonna go. What? See, recently. What? Drink? Oh, receive drink. Excuse me, we have stuff to do. <laughs> let's perform yet another song. She's performing on Never to Woo Woo again. Never to Woo Woo again. Yes, we're gonna do that. <laughs> I'm sure she would have had a few trysts before her time here in Sandusk. She's a new addition. She only arrived um, after the Jacobin uh, Cathedral was established. Yeah, she only arrived recently, probably because, and this kind of makes sense to me, that when you put the Peteran and Jacobin stuff down, that increases, I think, culture in the kingdom. So it makes sense to me that if Sandusk was becoming a cultured kingdom, that it would attract artists and performers like Trabada Apruda. And so she would have come here because she would see more opportunity in spreading her craft and all of those cool things. So that totally makes sense to me why she came so late. Ah, that was a short song, that was pretty cool. Okay, one more. Craft Hall, My Home Tis Thee. Really? Are you from Craft Hall? <laughs> oh, look at her. She has a beautiful voice. She has a beautiful voice indeed. A very nice voice. Okay, so she should be wrapping this up pretty quick. And the knight is... Well, not that young, but... <laughs> I think she's gonna be quite happy to go ahead and do whatever else she needs to do. She's full of energy. So, of course. Maybe she's a bit of a night owl. I don't know. She's also cursed. Hmm. Tribana Pruda is earning less money than she could because she has recently performed. Okay, that makes sense. But we've wrapped this up. The people seem inspired. Hopefully they will find the boy soon. I should perform some of my bodily duties and wait for any news. Okay, so we have to wait for news. The people have been inspired. It's only a matter of time. Well, we don't have any bodily duties, so why not speak to maybe Shad the villager? We're gonna go welcome home, of course, of course. Yeah, she's gonna speak to Shad. No, I don't know the type of person that Trabada Bruto would be um, into, but normally we have stuff to do. We don't have any stuff to do, so who knows? Maybe she might uh, pursue someone? Who knows? Shad doesn't seem as interested in her as he does in the bar, man. Hmm. Let's discuss some artistic work, see if he's inclined to that sort of thing. Don't really know if he is, but that shouldn't stop us from trying, should it? And who knows, we might strike up a romance, we might not. He's just a villager. <laughs> I don't exactly know what Shad is like. Yeah, we don't know his traits at all, and I don't know, he doesn't strike me as someone that interesting that Aparuda would be taken with. She seems to be trying, but I feel as though he's a very bland character. The bomb and Daniel, though, seems a lot cooler. So let's chat with uh, Bomb and Daniel. He definitely seems a lot cooler. And then Shad. Shad doesn't seem very interesting at all, in my opinion. Oh, look, she's friends. Oh, that's cool. She's friends with Daniel. He's friendly, a jokester, and a glutton. You know what? Maybe I could see something happening between the two of them because they spend a lot of time together. I mean, he is the barman, and plus, she lives up here uh, in the inn. So, I don't know. I guess I could see them having late night talks once the bar is closed, maybe when everyone's gone. Oh, the merchant prince, Duncan of Tridini. Hmm. And the smith master, Cyriacu of Croft Hall. But I can see her kind of becoming really close. He does agnostic too. Becoming really close. Let's ask for inspiration. To Daniel. Because they spend a lot of time together. Hmm. And I don't know if she um, 
has any family or she ever was close to anyone. But if she wasn't, ah, food and drink theme. If she wasn't, then it kind of makes sense to me that she would be attracted to someone that gives her a sense of security, which if Bauman Daniel is the only other person that is permanent in this establishment, I could, I could see him giving her. Anyways, guys, with that said and done, I'm going to leave off here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.